For thousands of years, the ability to understand and use language has been held as proof of human superiority over the rest of the living world. This young chimp shown playing in a residential yard outside Reno, Nevada in 1966 would set the scientific community on fire for the next 40 years and challenge the very notion of what it is to be human. Meet Washoe, the world's first chimpanzee to acquire a human language. As far back as ancient Greece, philosophers proposed a natural order with man and dominion over all living things. This idea, prominent in the Bible, pervaded Western thought for centuries, culminating in Descartes asserting that animals are entirely unthinking. This notion stands in stark contrast to the beliefs of those who lived with chimpanzees. African cultures tended to regard apes as simply a different form of man, highly intelligent and highly capable. Chimps share 98% of our DNA. They use tools and live in complex social structures. Our growing understanding of our genetic similarity caught the attention of the emerging American space program. It also intrigued developmental psychologists studying the impact of nature versus nurture. Their idea was to raise one species as another to see if traits could be passed on, a concept known as cross-fostering. One of the first such experiments was aimed at teaching a chimpanzee named Vicky to speak. Vicky, do this. The experiment failed because chimps lack the necessary anatomical structures for speech, and it emboldened those arguing that only humans had the mental capacity for language. This would all change with Washoe. Washoe was the first non-human to acquire a human language. This put into question whether language is defined what linguist Noam Chomsky describes as the human essence. Washoe was born in West Africa in September 1965. At 10 months old, she was captured and brought to America to be used in the space program. Doctors Allen and Beatrix Gardner from the University of Nevada at Reno acquired the infant Washoe from the Air Force. The gardeners had a new idea. Knowing the anatomical limitations of teaching a chimpanzee to speak, they decided to teach Washoe a gestural form of communication, American Sign Language. Washoe was raised in the gardener's home as though she were a deaf human child. She would play pretend with her dolls, use the toilet, go for rides in the car, wear clothes, and eat with cutlery just like any other child. Washoe lived with the gardeners for five years and learned over 130 signs. As she outgrew her suburban home, she was sent to the Institute for Primate Studies in Oklahoma accompanied by the gardener's student, Roger Fouts. Fouts had just received his PhD and would remain with Washoe his entire career. At the Institute, he would teach several other chimps to become proficient in ASL. Among them were Bowie, Bruno, Allie, and Lucy, some of whom achieved a level of celebrity in their day. The gardeners soon started another project with multiple chimpanzees to test whether they would reinforce each other's signing as a social group. These chimps, Moja, Tattoo, and Dar, would eventually be turned over to Fouts and join Washoe's family. Meanwhile, Fouts had located an infant chimp named Lulus for Washoe to adopt. He made the decision not to teach Lulus to sign at all. By the age of six, however, Lulus was fluent in ASL. Washoe had taught him the language. Project Washoe obviously made some bold scientific claims, but not everyone accepted the idea that apes could acquire language. The core of human sensibility and uh, 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 creative and cognitive capacity is the development of this completely unique capacity. There's nothing analogous to it anywhere in the animal world. Skepticism was fueled by the apparent failure of the primate language study done by Herbert Terrace, a psychologist at Columbia University. His team taught ASL to a chimpanzee born at the same facility where Washoe lived. 
Shortly after his birth, Terrace's team took the infant to New York and named him Nim Chimsky, a playful jab at linguist Noam Chomsky. Doubting the scientific rigor of the gardener's methods, Terrace decided to treat Nim as a true test subject rather than the highly social being he was. From 1973 to 1977, Terrace and his team of researchers trained Nim in a controlled environment with little external stimulation. He could never develop meaningful relationships with any of his caretakers because they would cycle in and out of his life without warning. This proved to be psychologically damaging to an animal as social as a chimpanzee. Unlike the gardener's chimps, Nim built up resentment and aggression towards the outside world. After Nim attacked the caretaker, the project was terminated. In publishing his results, Terrace stated that Nim had learned nothing, even though the record shows he acquired at least 125 signs. Dr. Mary Lee Jensvold is a student of both the Gardeners and Roger Fouts, and the former director of the Chimpanzee Human Communication Institute at Central Washington University, where Washoe and her family lived. She's currently associate director of Fauna Foundation outside Montreal, Quebec, where she cares for and studies the two remaining signing chimps, Lulus and Tattoo. How much damage did Herb Terrace do to the ape language studies? Yeah, he did a lot of damage. Do you think the scientific community accepted Terrace because they'd rather believe in the apparent failure of Project NIM than the results of Project Washoe? Yeah, absolutely. You got it. Because the Project NIM said, hey, that's right, don't worry. They're not really doing it. It's all a charade. They're just imitating and they're just uh, doing it for food rewards. Which, yes, absolutely is, uh, is untrue. The chimps sign without food rewards. They sign with no humans around. Um, but, yeah, it was like people go, oh, thank goodness, you're telling us a story that we want to hear that, yeah, we are special. Contrary to what skeptics believed, the apes not only learned signs, but acquired the language behind them. They used signs to communicate information. There's the baby in the cup. Baby in baby in my drink. They combine signs to represent ideas. For example, I call ducks ducks. Washoe calls them water birds. I, uh, I've never signed this. Obviously, she put this together. And they signed without human prompting. Here, Washoe is alone. The sign for red is a finger on the lips. Red. 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 The boot she's wearing is red. That red. As the 1970s drew to a close, the end was near for the ape language experiments. Skepticism from the scientific community, along with the apparent failure of Project NIM, allowed scientists to dismiss the results of Project Washoe. And so it ended. Washoe and her family moved to Central Washington University with Fouts. Moja passed away in 2002, Washoe in 2007, and Dar in 2012. When Central Washington terminated the program, Lulis and Tatu were relocated to Fauna Foundation. Nim, Ali, Bowie, and Bruno were sold into biomedical research. Nim was released but died prematurely in 2000. Bruno died in the laboratory, and Bowie lived in a cage for 16 years before being released to a sanctuary. Ali was never seen again. Lucy was sent to Africa, where she struggled to live in the wild and was killed by poachers. The ape language experiments have two legacies. The first is obviously tragic. The side effect of conducting these experiments on apes is that they are robbed of their freedom and any semblance of a normal life. There's a growing sense in the primatology community that all future studies on apes should be conducted in their natural habitats. But the second legacy is revolutionary. These experiments redefined our place in the natural order. The idea of human superiority the philosophers instilled in society has been shaken. The barrier that separates us from them has broken. And all of this was made possible by one rather ordinary chimpanzee, Washoe.